I have two space news for you this week. So let's see. First of all, we had on October 1st, on October 3rd, uh, an X9 solar flare happening on October 3rd. We'll talk about that in a moment. And Crew 9 reached the space station last Sunday. So let's have a look at those two topics today. So first of all, if you look at, so let's see if I can make it better, bigger. So on, on October 3rd, we had a solar flare, an X9. That means it's the biggest solar flare we've had on this solar cycle. So I'm going to share with you in, in a moment what is a solar cycle, but let's see if we can look first at some amazing pictures from that. So here you could see from the sun, there's a lot of activities on the sun. And this time on the sun, there's a lot of sunspots. Sunspots means that there are some areas that are a bit cooler, creating a lot of action, a lot of solar flares, little solar storms on the surface of the sun. But what's interesting with this X9 flare is that it was it happened right in front of us. So that means that on October 3rd, within, within eight minutes, we had the light coming to us and we were able to see through a satellite, we were able to see that there was a solar flare. Now, now there's two things going on here. First, there's light. Second, there are the particles, the ions coming out of the sun coming towards us. And I was trying to look for um, a place where I could see the view from the satellite. But from a, you, what you could see, so if you have a, the, uh, see if I can make it a bit bigger. So if you can think of a camera from the satellite looking at the sun, you could see materials going above and on either side. That means that this sun, uh, sun flare happened right in front of us. That was beautiful. Perfect. Let's continue to see some photos. The reason why I'm showing the photos, it gives us a good idea of what the, the energy was. Second, uh, there's different filters that give us some different point of view, which was uh, amazing. So here they're looking for different wavelengths. So here you could see the sunspot was right here, but lots of activities all around. So do, in order to be able to see such uh, activities, we need to put filters uh, with our lens so that we can decrease how much light comes to them. And that's why. So what is black, uh, much darker here are places where it's a bit cooler. And so we can see nicely the different storms. Look at how beautiful that is. This is very bright because in this moment, there was so much light coming to the lens that it was hard to see what, um, to see what else was going on on the sun. Here's another, another view right here. And this is amazing. Let's see if I can make it bigger. That'll be fun. Look at this. Uh, it's, I just want to show, look at this storm right here. So if you were to look on, uh, sun, for sunspots on the sun, you'll have little sunspots in this area. So this is quite amazing. Look at how much activity is right here. You'll notice that the activities will, is happening around the, the equator of the sun because the sun is rotating on itself. And what happens is that you have a lot more uh, action in the gases along the equator. So here you could see, look at how these different storms happening all at the same time. So this one was right in front of us. That means that the information came to us, but keep in mind that the sun is a three dimensional object. And therefore we have solar flares and storms happening all around it all the time. Look at how beautiful that is. You've got here a magnetic storm right here. You could see the arches. You can see other arches here. It's just amazing pictures. So here's another example. So here, oh, it shows what, it, so here you could see there was some action and oh, and there was the flare. And that is happening all the time. Don't forget, there's a lot of f fusion happening on our sun and a lot of uh, energy being created. So these are all amazing pictures for that. Now, so, some of you may ask, how come we have uh, more storms uh, this year? And we had a few last year, if I remember well, it's because the sun has a solar cycle. So here there's a solar cycle. We'll average it at about every 10 years or so. So the previous one, it was from 210 all the way to 220. So what happens, you could see in 210, there was a lot less activities over on the sun. And here in 2014 and 15, a lot more action. And then towards 2020, then the sun became much more quiet. 
and these are in cycles. What's interesting here is that when you go in the, the quieter cycle, there's a lot less uh, sunspots on them. That means that the surface of the sun is very uniform in the way it looks and the temperature over it. However, the more sunspots there are, the more differences in temperature on its surface and the more active it is. So now let's look at the graph. We are in on what we call the 25th cycle. What a 25th cycle is that because it's a 20, the 25th cycle that we've been monitoring. So when we had scientists actually started to pay attention to these cycles. So perfect. So here, as you can see, we're on the 25th cycle. I mentioned that the between 210 here and 220, that was the cycle 24. As you can see, so these are the number of sunspots on the sun, but the number of sunspots tells us, uh, gives us a clue that the sun will be much more active. You could see that the previous cycle did not have as much sunspots, but 23 and 24, we had a lot more. Now here we are on the 25th, we are 25th cycle, we're in 2024 right now, and we have a lot of activities. So the question we have here is that how much, how many sunspots will we have? The prediction is that we'll have the most active sun uh, at about 2025. So it seems that from what we're predicting, that in the coming months, there'll be more and more activities. So we'll see what the, will happen there, but it's amazing to see how the sun is and to appreciate what it has. So that's the first news I have for us today. The other news is about the fact that we have Crew-9 that made it to the space station. It made it on, the, so we, I did a video on the launch of Crew-9 last Saturday. Crew-9 made it to the space station on Sunday and everything went well. Now we have to keep in mind that, as I mentioned last week, in the Crew-9, there was only two, uh, two people. There was an astronaut and a cosmonaut. Let's see, the cosmonaut is Alexander. And let's see, so it was, uh, the cosmonaut was Alexander Gorbanov, and we have the astronaut from NASA, which is Nick Haig. Only two people. And the reason why there were two people is that we have two astronauts from Boeing that came to the space station in June and they are there. So what happened? Two new humans came on board with two empty seats from Crew-9. That means that now Wilmore and Williams are now um, integral teams, are, are part of, an integral part of Crew-9. So now in the next six months, Wilmore and Williams will be part of everything that needs to happen on the space stations, repairs, experiments, and maintenance of the space station. So that when they come back in September, 2025, everything, their, their trek to the space station will be over. So here, there were some nice pictures here. Very nice, look at this. So here we have um, Sydney Williams. We have the two new, so we have here the cosmonaut and uh, Haig from NASA. I think this is Mr. Wilmore right here. I have to double check. But we have here crew eight that will be coming back uh, in the coming weeks. What was interesting here, I was able to see an amazing picture which I had not seen in a long time. So this is, so let's put the article. So SpaceX Dragon with Crew-9 aboard, uh, aboard Docks 2 station. So this is more or less the International Space Station. As you can see, we have Crew-9 that uh, was able to, to reach the space station. And we have the Crew-8 Dragon right here. So these will, are here for the safety of uh, the, the personnel on the space station. If something happens, they need to be able to leave keeping in mind that these missions are planned years ahead of time. Now here for Dragon 9, Dragon, it could not go up until the Starliner from Boeing was still attached to the space station. So that's why a few weeks ago, the Starliner was uh, detached, came back to Earth. I still, I'm still waiting for news on how the, what is the state of that capsule. But now we have Dragon 9 that will be here and we have Dragon 8 with its four astronaut that will be coming back in the weeks to come. So here that will liberate here, a docking, a dock for someone else or another capsule to come here. 
Interestingly enough, we have two progress capsules. Usually those capsules are filled, are sent to the station with plenty of resources, water, experiments, food, and so on. And when they empty those, those capsules, they fill it with all kinds of uh, um, articles they don't need anymore. So human waste, uh, old experiments, things that they replace, uh, garbage, everything is put in those. And usually when they leave the space station, they burn in the atmosphere because there's no reason for us uh, to bring back garbage. And second, um, it's cost a lot less to send a capsule that will burn back in the atmosphere than having to want to have it back um, with humans. And that's why we could not have either of these to bring back uh, Wilmore and Williams. It was not safe for them. So here we have the Soyuz M6, uh, MS-26. So uh, we have the, the Russia, the Russians that send some astronauts, some cosmonauts in the last uh, couple of weeks. And I'm not sure what Cygnus 21 is. So I'm going to have to do some research. If some of you know what it is, I'd be more than happy to know what it is. So it's quite nice to see. So here it's full pack um, International Space Station, reminding you that given five or six years, this will be retired. And what I think will happen is that the whole space station will burn in the atmosphere when we bring it back. But that's another story for the years to come. And these are the topics I have for us today. And it will be a short, uh, a short video because I'm planning to go and pick some apples. It's a great time for that here. And on this, if you have any clarification questions or ideas of videos you'd like to see for next week's, um, put them in, put your comments in the comments below and always looking at them answering them so I get good ideas for you. On this, have an amazing week, and I will put here a link to another video for you to see, and I'll see you next week after this video.